what did you think about what you saw? It's an egregious uh, attack on civil liberties. What do you say to those who may say that you guys were out there provoking police when all of this went down? I would say uh, the video doesn't lie. Look at the video. How do you feel now? I'm looking forward to my day in court. Uh, to stand up for the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution is something that I'm very proud of. And I'm ha very happy to provide that service to the world and the community and uh, the country. I mean, I'm a proud American anarchist. I know that sounds weird, <laughs> but I love this country. I'm an anarchist from this country, and I want to stand up for my civil liberties. So this is going to be an obvious question, but how could NPDF handle Set a clear boundary and tell me to take a, a few steps back, and officer, I'll take two steps back. Instead of, you know, leaping on me and throwing me on the ground. I mean, that would be great, APD. Thank you. Thank you. Quite welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah. So you're Mike Smith, right? Right. Mike Blue Hair, I go by on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a pseudonym. Is, is your real name Mike Smith? You know, I actually asked about you um, at the courthouse, and they said there's no Michael Smith. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Because honestly, I get death threats on my YouTube channel for what I do. Like, I have probably the most active YouTube channel for police accountability online. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, as it were, but I have over 900 videos and most of them are all police accountability oriented. And I inter uh, interact with Portland Police Bureau quite a bit because that's where I'm from and I'm not treated this way there. They set clear boundaries, you know, hey, step away and I step out of their way and get out of their way and move. And what organization do you work with in Portland? Film the Police Portland, I'm the co-founder of that. So you, you were just in town helping Antonio or? I came here to show solidarity with Sandra Bland. I wanted to make Sandra's voice a little louder, you know, since her voice was taken from her. I want her voice to be louder, so I came out here for a protest on the 8th to show solidarity with, with her. So how'd you end up on 6th Street last night? I came out with uh, Beeler. I've been drafted into his uh, Peaceful Streets <laughs> project. Uh, I'm on loan from uh, Portland, Oregon, and I'll be working uh, with, this guy, with these guys for about another week and a half. What are your actual charges? Interfering. I don't know how I could be interfering. I was standing there with a camera in my hand. This camera. I don't want to drop this or get into a tussle with this. This, this is my livelihood. Like, I do freelance uh, videography work for a living. Were you charged with resisting arrest like Antonio was? No. No. Now, did police confiscate your video? Were you able to see they the took my media shot. card. Uh, to the officer, to the officer's credit, that arrested me. I asked him to let me keep my livelihood and uh, take my media card instead of taking my camera, and that's what he did. Here's Antonio too. Here's Antonio, he's behind. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel now? I'm just happy to get out. I mean, I can grab a very question. Because <laughs> I just spent like uh, 18 hours in jail. So. so tell us what happened in your lives. You know, the same thing that's been happening for the past three and a half years. You know, we we try to go out and record the police in order to help protect people's rights, encourage people to stand up for their rights and bring communities together to fight police abuse. And they have shown a pattern and practice of violating our constitutional uh, rights to do so. And so last night was just more of the same. They didn't like the fact that we were out there filming. And so then they decided to arrest us in order to try to chill our ability to fight back. 
the same the same purpose we have with filming all the time. Our goal is to go out there and put cameras out on the street in order to do a few things. One is empower people to recognize that they have uh, rights and that they can stand up for their rights. Two is document uh, police activity in case anything um, unprofessional or criminal happens. And three is to try to deter police officers from committing crimes or acting abusive. Uh, typically, that's exactly what happens. However, when you run into people like Sergeant Randy Deer, uh, the exact opposite happens. Uh, he sees cameras, he sees it as, as a threat, and then he'll go ahead and attack people who have cameras in their hands. Now, what do you say to those when you say that, you know, you have a history of kind of pushing the envelope when it comes to the police department? What do you want to say to that? Well, I mean, I have a history of getting arrested illegally, and I always get exonerated. Uh, the Boston Police Department has a history of committing crimes. We don't commit crimes. We go out there and try to document police activity. Good police would want us to film them because they would want to show the world how wonderful and professional they are. The only cops who seem to have a problem with it are criminal cops. And uh, unfortunately, also the police department has a lot of criminal cops. What made you decide to start filming those two officers? Oh, it, it, it was a string of a lot of things. So Sergeant Randy Deer has been harassing cop watchers now for months. Um, there's been other people that he's threatened to arrest on numerous occasions. And we were actually just filming not even a detention. There was a guy who was out there proselytizing of some sort, and the police said, hey, you can't do something here. So he was just asking him, okay, well, what can I do? What can I do? And so it was a completely consensual uh, conversation. No reason for anyone to get upset. And I was filming, and uh, Sergeant Randy Deer started following me around, saying, you need to back up, you need to back up. And I was like, <laughs> I I'm allowed to be here. And so after that, we just started to shadow him for the rest of the night because we knew that uh, if there was anyone that was going to be committing a crime that night, it was going to be him and his subordinates. Did you ever get close to him? Well, I think that if you look at the video, we're pretty close, but if you look at the video, <laughs> you'll realize that he walked towards me. Mm -hmm. He came up towards me, um, he started talking to me, then he said something silly like, you need to be one arm length away after he approached me. Um, so yeah, I, think, I think the video will tell everything. I, I, I haven't seen the video. Um, I know that uh, we expect to put out the uh, video, and I think that the world can see. I mean, the people of Boston can, can certainly see that the only criminals uh, out last night were the Austin awesome Police Department. What did you think about the resisting arrest? I mean, listen, you can resist arrest by uh, shoving your face into a police officer's fist over and over again. It's just, you know, they, they can come up with anything that they want. I think it's pretty obvious from the video. I wasn't resisting arrest. I was trying to give my camera to a friend because they have previously held my cameras for two years to prevent us from getting the video out. They, re they refused to give us the uh, dash cam for my initial arrest for two years and nine months. And so I wanted to make sure that, that video was available for everyone. Because what they do is they put out a narrative that's false and then the media doesn't have much to go on. And so, well, the police said it, so we'll at least repeat what the police said, but it's a straight up lie. So I wanted to make sure that, that video was available for everyone. So that's the point that possibly could have sent from you trying to give a camera to someone else. But I, I think that any reasonable, objective, or semi-intelligent person can see I didn't resist arrest. It's just Austin Police Department's pathetic attempt to try to layer on charges. So what's the next step for you? The same thing. I mean, the police, first off, the Peaceful Streets Project is way more than me. It's just some of these police officers seem to have a liking towards me. Um, but we're going to keep, we're going to keep uh, cop watching. We're going to keep doing Know Your Rights training. We're going to keep working with other allies. The police uh, accountability movement is a national movement now, and uh, we're working with people in other cities, and we're just going to keep pushing forward. Um, we're just we're not a very civilized society. We still believe that we have to give people the right to violate uh, and abuse people in order to keep order, and you know we need to evolve beyond that. And, and we're a long way from getting there, but hopefully through the work of the Peaceful Streets Project and other uh, committed individuals nationwide, we can move towards that evolution. How do you feel that it's happening again? You know, we I finally beat my last charge uh, just last month. So um, I had been arrested five times. I've had 10 criminal charges previously. I've had dozens of investigations against me. And we beat every single one. And I was finally free and clear. And so um, there's some 
some people out there like Hubert Acevedo who might try to say that I like to get arrested. The last thing I like to do is get arrested. I was happy to finally be free of all these charges, but you know, when we're out there and we're flexing our rights and we're standing up for the First Amendment and you know our basic constitutional rights, and a cop comes over and says, you know, we're going to violate your rights right now. Sometimes uh, some of us will make that decision at that moment to say, well, you know what? We're actually going to flex our rights. We're going to stand on principle here and let the chips fall where they may. Do you say anything else? Um, PeacefulStreets.com, if anyone wants to join us, uh, please contact us. Uh, we need lots of volunteers out there. Austin Police Department has 1,700 cops, apparently zero cops who are willing to speak out against the crimes of the Austin Police Department. Um, one activist is as good as 100 cops, so um, if you want to join us, please go to PeacefulStreets.com and learn more. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not that I know of. I mean, they, they might have organized <laughs> something, but I, I've been... Hanging out here, so <laughs> that's fair. <Yeah. laughs>